Hi there again, that's Tony Arena here, business broker from BCI Business Brokers in Sydney. This is our video series looking at business value, what a buyer should pay for a business, what a seller should expect to receive from a business. And in one of our other videos, we had a look at exactly that. How does risk and multiple of profit intersect? What's a reasonable price to pay according to the risk posed by a business or inherent in a business? Now, I'm asked two questions as a business broker more than any others. The first one is, what's my business worth? The second one is, what sort of business should I buy? What's hot right now? What's not? What's popular? What's good? What's bad? And you know, uh, that changes from time to time, but there are some general principles which we can rely on. And I want to look at those now in light of certain industries. So to answer that very important question, what's a hot business? What's not? What should you look for? What should you steer clear of? Let's get to work. So this is simply three columns. In each column, I've put a particular business type. Might I say at the outset that there's nothing set in concrete here. A type of business in low value column one could appear in high value column three, depending on the circumstances. And we'll try and look at different circumstances that might apply to the same business, the same industry. So let's take right at the top of the list, uh, say a fitness business, you have a personal trainer, that trainer has a couple of clients, might be even more than a couple, go down the local park, pull out the equipment, do the work, come home. Those clients love that trainer, that trainer's got them fit, maybe rehabilitated them from injury, and they've, they've got a very good relationship. Now, should that trainer try and sell that business, there could be a few problems. The major problem being, will that income be there for me as a buyer, inheriting that income from the seller? That's the question we're asking. And in the business I just described, it's not gonna come across. Those clients, without doing anything illegal or anything wrong, want to follow that trainer. The same could be said, and this is our second in the category of personal service businesses, a hair salon. A hair cutter, male or female, doesn't matter, has a strong clientele, uh, maybe they're the, the major cutter or could be the only cutter in the salon, the only value to that salon is the assets. So if you had to go and set up a salon next door or this one, that's probably about the same value. And so just be careful of personal service businesses and businesses where the goodwill resides in the owner and it's gonna be walking out the door when the owner does. It's a big statement to say that retail is low value, but the history is that retail, ever since the advent of the big shopping center, strip retail, mum and dad retail, has suffered. I'm not saying there aren't good retail businesses out there, but a lot of their income was taken away by the shopping center. And then high rents, and then change of use on the high street, and less retail. What about today? We're in the middle of a pandemic. The shopping centers aren't doing as well. Remember, in the pandemic, people can't get together. Anything that involves people coming together uh, puts your business at risk. So uh, they're not going to the shopping center, they're all working from home. The local shops picked up again. This is the way the seesaw works in business, but especially in retail. So these retail businesses now that maybe suffered from lack of local patronage are doing well, but it depends on the circumstance. If you're gonna move into retail, you have to know a little bit about what you're trying to sell. What do I mean by contracting? See, typically a business where you go from contract to contract. Let's say, oh, last year I had a fabulous year. You know, I secured this contract, went for 18 months, I made 600,000 in sales out of it, but there's no guarantee it's gonna be there next year. It might be there, there might be a bigger one next year, but there's not going to be that continuity of income that you'd like to expect to see if you're gonna pay big money for a business. Hospitality, we touched on it a bit with retail, but see what's happened with hospitality is people are getting together, conferences, uh, group meetings, uh, training, um, uh, cafes and restaurants. Certain cafes and restaurants have done well, certain ones haven't. If you're in the CBD, you haven't done well. 
If you're uh, in the suburbs, you've probably done better. Your local clientele is coming back. Takeaway has picked up. If you rely on sit-down trade, it's not good. And all on top of that, even before a pandemic arrived, hospitality was often related to the owner. So that goodwill, there we go again, the goodwill resides in the exiting owner. And uh, can you do better? Are you gonna do as well? These are the questions you have to ask. Homemaker, this is uh, again a 50-50 proposition. They've, they've done very well in the pandemic, but have, have their customers simply put off buying decisions uh, or brought them forward uh, to the current day? Is that what's happened in, in homemaking, tiles, um, furniture, carpeting, all of that? Are customers actually buying today so they don't have to buy tomorrow? If you buy a business that's done very well in the pandemic, are you going to suffer from the fact that people have already bought and the, your customers are already satisfied? Real estate sales is an interesting one. See, the real estate sales team relies on the stars in that team. And if those stars go walk across the road and get a job with a competitor, they're going to take all their customers, all their following with them, and you're going to have to go and you know, find your next star salesman or, or suffer a reduction in um, profit. At this stage, the real estate sales business um, doesn't attract a lot of goodwill. If it's a franchise, there could be some value in, in the franchise, but um, generally not much goodwill. Publishing. Well, Facebook's a publisher. Is that low value? Of course not. But it's grabbed a lot of market share. It's caused uh, many media outlets to suffer with uh, photographers and journalists losing their jobs uh, right across the country. So publishing uh, going to be potentially uh, affected by government regulation. These are the things that you have to look at. Does the government have to step in and save publishing? Will it? And even if it did, would the next government maintain it? You've got to ask the right questions.